Good morning. My name is Pastor Dan Whitener. Welcome to this worship service on the third Sunday of Easter. We welcome all of those who are joining us online this morning for worship, and we encourage you to follow along with the liturgy that can, is available for you this morning. A couple of things about our life together. First of all, our monthly collection uh, this month is uh, for toiletry and first aid supplies, and you can drop those off in the lobby uh, at any time. Also, I would commend to you at 7 p.m. this evening uh, a Zoom viewing and discussion of the documentary film 13th. And finally, next Saturday, we will have a property cleanup from 9 until noon, and we encourage you to come, bring your work gloves, and join the fun. Let us prepare ourselves for worship this morning with the Easter proclamation. This is the day that in joy and delight we join with all the angels of heaven and all the creatures on earth to sing our praise and thanksgiving to you, all holy and mighty and glorious God, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This is the day that you broke the chains of death. This is the day that, marrying heaven to earth, you washed away sin, rescued us from evil, and brought us your peace. The Lamb who was slain has begun to reign, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 3. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you have handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One, and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect help in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. to Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat here? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christian mystic Richard Rohr writes this, all great spirituality is about what we do with our pain. If we do not transform our pain, we risk transmitting it to others. This third Sunday of Easter, we encounter the disciples in pain. 
Yet again, they are gathered together. They are confused and unseen. They have heard the three-point sermon by the white-robed messenger at the empty tomb, proclaiming the good news. They have encountered a resurrected Jesus while still locked behind closed doors. Yet despite these signs, they cannot see the forest for the trees. They are unable to discern a path forward. The disciples do not know what to do with their pain. Grief is a powerful thing. While a natural process in the aftermath of loss, when one becomes stuck in grief, it can derail life locking people in sadness and fear. The disciples are stuck. They're stuck unseen in their grief. Grieving the death of their friend and teacher, Jesus, Grieving the perceived loss of the movement that led him to the cross. Grieving what used to be. Stuck in their grief, they still don't know what to do with their pain. Therefore, the disciples must learn to transform their pain post-resurrection, or they will risk transmitting it to those around them. Post-resurrection life is tough. I have often commented to friends that as painful as it was learning to live into the COVID-19 pandemic, it was probably going to be much more challenging navigating our way out of it. It is. Something big has happened. A global, life-altering, tragic event. And now we are left grieving grieving lost lives and lost time, grieving what used to be. Whether its impact on your personal life has been seismic or imperceptible, we have all been changed in ways seen and yet to be seen. As we wrestle with how we have or have not responded to the crisis, perhaps like these first disciples, we too don't know what to do with our pain. Whether you are anxious, uncertain, hopeful, frustrated, confused, eager, or still tentative behind closed doors, we all must learn to transform our pain, or we will risk transmitting it to those around us. Rowan Williamson writes that there is no healing of memory until the memory itself is exposed, and exposed as a wound, a loss. Jesus meets the disciples where they are at, standing among them in the ordinariness of life. He exposes the wound so that in their grief, they may begin to heal. Jesus says, touch me. However, it may be helpful to understand Jesus' invitation to touch as to blindly feel one's way forward, to grapple with the doubt, to literally sense for the resurrected Jesus. There, Jesus meets them in their grief and transforms their pain by offering forgiveness, and hope for healing. It is not instantaneous. The disciples do not throw the doors open wide, for joyful disbelieving is the beginning of pain's transformation. It is a reconciling process Christ offers the disciples today. A process that begins with the offering of peace, the opportunity for repentance and forgiveness, the sharing of a meal and immersion and growth in the word. In this process, Christ coaxes a hopeful healing that begins to transform their pain into joy. And even though they are still in disbelief, 
they are commissioned to offer the same to others. Theologians Yancey and Sears remind us that God has always chosen the slow and difficult way, respecting human freedom regardless of the cost. God did not abolish the face of evil. He transformed it. He did not stop the crucifixion. He rose from the dead. Scars never completely go away, but neither do they hurt any longer. So too, Christ meets us where we are at in our post-pandemic resurrection time, in the ordinariness of our daily lives. Online, outdoors, indoors, behind masks, and in the eyes of strangers and others that we meet along the way. With a reconciling process, Christ slowly draws us out of locked rooms of sadness and fear and transforms our pain with forgiveness and the hope of healing. It is a slow and difficult way of discernment in human freedom. We do not throw our doors wide open, nor do we remain stuck in our anxious grief. The risen Christ meets us wherever we are at and commissions us to meet our neighbor where they are at and engage in this reconciling work of Christ. Today we share the peace with one another. We participate in mutual repentance and forgiveness. We will encounter the risen Christ in presence of the meal and immerse ourselves in the word. These are the means of grace by which Christ transformed our pain so that we might not transmit it to others. It is, as Williamson suggests, in the spirit, we are not only the recipient, but the transmitters of hope. Our pandemic scars may never go away. However, through the reconciling process of Jesus Christ, neither will they hurt any longer. There is hope for healing in this post-resurrection life. As we sense our way forward towards the resurrected Jesus, meets us there, transforming our, our pain and sending us forward as transmitters of hope. Let the people say, Amen.
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wandering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation and provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Guide and strengthen all national, state, and local leaders of people in the peace of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you heal the, hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. Especially we pray today for Charlie, Ray, Gigi, Ed, Jane, Rose, Chris, Herbert, Marilyn, Stacy, George, and those we name aloud or silently at this time. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and old witness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together boldly. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. At this time, I would challenge you to share the peace of Christ with someone maybe that you haven't shared in a while either through a text or later through an email or a telephone call or even those who are near to you in your own household. At this time, I want to thank the congregation uh, deeply for your generosity up through the first uh, quarter of the year so far. Uh, you have been very generous in terms of your financial contributions, but also contributions in kind, especially those that are dropped off in the church lobby. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.